down here, you son of a bitch! Come on, man. You didn't feel a thing. Particularly and 
ropes are equipped for you to protect yourself against the attack from a bear, a boar, or a tiger. And there are four main things that I'd like to identify in this video that dictate the choice of design. One of those is the shape of the tip. Another is the cross section of the blade. Another is the um, size of the old overall weapon and also the shape of the blade, if we roll those two into one. And finally is the design of the grip or handle or hilt, whatever you want to call it. So how do you secure your hook hand onto the, uh, onto the weapon? Okay. Now, very briefly, to explain why all those things are important. So, the tip shape is important for penetration, okay? And the tip shape is related to the cross section as well. So, fundamentally, a double-edged blade will penetrate more easily than a single-edged blade in most circumstances. And when you're dealing with, for example, a bear's skull or a boar's uh, rib cage uh, or whatever, something quite big and meaty and resisting or with bone in it, a tip that's able to penetrate effectively is very, very important. The cross section obviously also relates to that. The cross section also relates to the strength of the blade. With a particularly large animal, a lot of strength, a lot of momentum, particularly obviously with a bear or potentially a boar or a deep tiger, they're bigger and heavier than we are generally speaking. The cross section of the blade is very important for strength. Now, you could argue that in some cases single-edged blades can be stronger than double-edged blades, depending on the particular cross section. But generally speaking, the cross section or thickness of the blade is very important. Now, the silhouette or shape of the blade is also very important for reasons of both penetration and extraction. We can't assume that a large creature uh, that is attacking you is necessarily going to um, be put down by one hit, even if it's to the skull. Um, and so you might need to extract it and reinsert it several times. So the shape of the blade and the extractability of the blade is very important. And finally, the hilt design is very important for retention. Okay? Now, there are other aspects of the hilt design which we can say, like whether you've got a thumb up grip or a hammer grip or whatever, how you're gripping it, whether it's point down or whether it's point up, things like that. But fundamentally, I'd say overall, the most important thing when you're dealing with a weapon of self defense against a large animal in Africa or America or Asia, if a large animal is attacking you, first of all, accessing it and getting it into your hand quickly. Secondly, keeping hold of it and being able to retain it while you're being attacked. So now we're going to look at four specific knife types and assess them for their suitability for this task. First of all, the historical sax or siax, as some people pronounce it. Okay, so this is a broken back style, so an English type, um, played by Paul Bins, hilt by a uh, sort of cutter. And fundamentally, this is a type of knife that would have been used historically for hunting as a backup against bears, wolves, and things like this. Uh, Lynx is potentially as well. That in northern Europe, uh, in what's called the Roman Dark Ages, the early medieval period, right the way through to around the time of the Norman Conquest. Now, this has a few problems with the, the design. It is a very strong blade, and it does have a very pointy tip. So fundamentally, you could say that the blade is quite well designed. Uh, and also, because of the broken back nature of it, you are not going to get over penetration. Now, over penetration is a problem because beyond a certain depth, the extra, penetra uh, extra penetration ceases to be useful. Okay. Now, you could say that a blade could, could usefully penetrate up to about five or six inches and still be doing uh, useful things in, in defending you. However, most people say kind of four inches is about where most things are happening, and beyond that is kind of superfluous. So, in a sense, we could say the sun is pretty well designed because it has a natural stopping point around there. You could maybe say the stopping point a bit further back, I probably would. Um, but what's great is you're unlikely to get the whole blade going in because of the way it widens. And it has a fairly thin tip because the edge is located at the front of a wedge. So because the edge is at the front of the wedge, this is nice and cute. So on the surface of it, you can say this is a great hunting blade. And yes, indeed, we're going to get to the bowie knife. This does have some similarities to a bowie knife and also the same advantages of the bowie knife. But the massive disadvantage of a sax, from my perspective, is the hilt. 
okay? I absolutely, for the modern world, if you're operating in areas where you might be attacked by a bear or a lion or a boar or something like this, a wolf hog, I would not recommend at all a grip like this because it's too slippy and slidey, particularly because the thing is going to get driven through your hand here and have your hand end up on the blade. And for any of you who know about the supposed history of the Bowie knife and its design having a cross guard, there you go. <laughs> uh, I think that was supposedly against a bull, uh, but there we go. A large creature that's attacking you don't really want a grip where your hand's going to travel up onto the blade. Very, very bad idea. So, overall, Siax, Sax, I would say the blade, great design for this particular scenario. Hilt, not so much. Right, so let's move naturally onto that. The typical Bowie knife, or Bowie knife, depending which part of America or Europe you are from. Right, so, or Australia. Um, so, the Bowie knife, uh, great design. Again, this is a really, really good choice. Um, it's got a lot of the advantage of the sax. It has a widening blade, so it has an acute point, a relatively strong point. Um, and it widens to a natural stopping point, therefore, not necessarily stopping and where the divorce bit would be impeding and uh, building up friction as you go down, so the depth of penetration is usually unlikely to reach beyond about five or six inches, which is what you want. You don't want the entire ten inches of blade going in. If you can prevent it, because that will take longer and be more difficult to get out. If you can get it out at all, and something like a you know a boar's skull or a bear skull. It might just, that might be it, it might be stuck in there, which might be enough, or it might not. There might be, for example, if it was wolves, if you're travelling in areas where you might be attacked uh, by the wolves, um, then indeed, one shot through one wolf might kill one, but you want to get it out to the other place, so hyenas, whatever, okay. So, the grip, really good, good secure grip, you can grip it a hammer grip, or a handshake grip, or a thumb up grip, whatever suits you, I would suggest thumb up grip, great for dealing here. Grip. 
But additionally, I think it will also aids retention because having a curved grip actually means that when you pull out, your hand, your lower fingers have something to work against rather than the straight line where you're wanting to come off the end. If it is curved like this, as we find with some sabers, it's actually easier to pull it back. Okay. And finally, the cross guard, um, obviously very useful for the all the aforementioned reasons to keep your hand from running up onto the rain. Now, the last of these four that we look at is an interesting one, and people travelling in areas where bears are a real and ever-present risk. Now, I understand for viewers who might be in the UK, for example, you're like, why are you talking about massive hunting lions and hyenas and bears and lions and stuff? Well, like news flash, a lot of people in the world live in areas where these animals are literally a risk, where you actually have to you know, obviously avoid them, and obviously rifles and firearms are the primary way of uh, dealing with them if needed. However, I literally know people who have had to use knives to defend themselves against large creatures. And yeah, I'm not going to say where they were, um, but it is a reality, okay? If you live in some parts of the world, you might be attacked by a bear or a lion or indeed a boar. I do know one person who's being attacked by a boar, anyway. Um, so, yes, it, it, you know, it is a reality, but it is also interesting, even in England, okay, people did used to have to deal with bears and wolves, okay? It's a reality of weapons. Like. So, the final example we're going to look at is the model bagger. And so, Marks is in the arts. Would the bubble dagger be a good weapon for a who has a back up, obviously after firearms, uh, against a bear attack? Now, fundamentally, as I said at the beginning, anything is better than nothing. I will say, that's a slight thing, I actually think it's pretty good, but we'll get to that in a second. Any type of pointy object applied in the right way will do the same thing. Even the kitchen knife, as modern crime shows, kitchen knives are the predominant knives used in crime and even organised attacks. Uh, and Anything with a point on it or an edge on it can be used in similar ways. So fundamentally, I don't want to make too much of the differences between these things because they can all do a in the right way, they can all do the same thing. What the rumble bag is it a good weapon against a bear attack or a lion attack? Pretty good, I would say, because it fulfills a lot of the criteria of the previous things we've looked at, which are all things that historically have been used in hunting large game or defending against large animals. But the rumble dagger historically was never intended for that. This was a specific weapon that was designed in the 14th century in Europe and carried right way through to the 16th century and was used primarily for dealing with armoured opponents for sticking into armpits and groins and visors and, and overcoming armoured people. So it has a relatively narrow blade that is very thick compared to other historical knives with a very slender point and long thin point usually. They can be double-edged or single-edged but many are a combination of both. So for example this one is it's actually single-edged up the there and then it has a bevel up the back. That for the rest of it is a penetration. And they have a very specific type of hilt which gives them their name, the rumble burger, because they have two rumbles which is very, very secure. It's easy to get out without having to look at it and it stays in your grip or the gormer once you're using it. So on paper, this would be a really good type of backup weapon to carry in a place where you might be worried about being attacked by lions, crocodiles, bears, tigers, things like this. Okay, yes. Huge amount of penetration, very strong blade, very unlikely to break, very secure grip. So the basic answer is yes. We'll define the fact that knives like this, uh, a bowie knife, and this um, ball hunting or bear hunting knife were designed for those purposes. Uh, and you know, various other designs in the world have been designed for those purposes. This would do the job really quite well. Um, now, I do think it has one major advantage for this purpose, and that is the potential for over-penetration. So the reason that rumble daggers, not all of them because they vary in size, but the reason that rumble daggers are often made so big is for fighting against people using other weapons, okay? So because this might be your only weapon when someone attacks you with a sword, like this, having some extra reach has two big advantages. Number one, it gives you reach, so you can actually not be too disadvantaged in terms of hitting the back, but also it gives you a long arm to defend with. So if you've got a long, long blade and 
someone swinging at you, jabbing a spear at you, or uh, swinging a sword at you, you would have all part of the thing that this is not really very useful if you were being pounced on by a bear or a lion, because it becomes unwieldy, it becomes difficult to move the point around. A small movement here means a huge movement up here, which actually means in a wrestling distance, actually a big blade becomes a bigger liability and more difficult to get where you want it. Number one, and number two, when you do get it where you want it and it goes in, it will go in an awful long way. It's such a slender blade, thick but narrow, that it will go in a long, long way. It'll be difficult to get back out again. Okay? So, overall, I think the Rumble Dagger, yes, it's a reliable weapon, fantastic grip, really, really good grip, uh, and certainly would go in very easily and do the job from that point of view. But I actually think these sorts of applications, the knives that were evolved for dealing with, defending against or hunting things like bears and uh, alligators and crocodiles and lions and tigers, these hunting knives are basically the optimum. So not as they are well made of good reliable steel with a strong hilt construction, strong tank, so they are reliable and strong in every way. They have a handguard of some sort, they have a secure grip of some sort, either canted or straight, but so that your hand can't slide off easily. They are not only like usually 9 or 10 inches, somewhere around right there, they have a, a huge point but then widens, okay, which prevents or helps prevent over penetration. Um, and uh, a good thick cross section, so they're strong against leverage and lateral forces, and these sorts of things, these things we've talked about. So fundamentally, the best things for defending against bears, lions, bulls, all of those things, are the knives that were designed for that purpose. Surprise, surprise. But absolutely, but, or anyone else, yes, a rondel hanger could still work. It's just not really optimised for that specific job. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting in the whole break. Maybe you massively disagree and you think Rumble Dagger would actually be better uh, for some reason. You certainly could use it for skinning and dressing things on the general bushcraft tools. Pretty useless for that. Um, but are there other daggers that I haven't considered here? If we go to India, for example, the Patar, the punch dagger, was used in tiger hunting, for example, and boar hunting. Um, and that had a reinforced tip, a broader blade, and your hands never going to go anywhere because you're not So that's actually another good option. So there are other types of knife and dagger out there which could do a similar job. The Qatar is a great example, and I highly recommend the Qatar. Uh, but maybe there's other ones I haven't thought of, Filipino or uh, South American, I don't know. Thanks for watching. Cheers, folks.